Hey folks, everything new under the sun. We're looking at uh, the 500 amp shunt, and this is direct from Midnight Solar, so they provided this one to me to go along with the Whizbang Junior um, that I already had. And uh, so this is a pretty heavy shunt, pretty heavy duty shunt. Um, and this is a, uh, the Whizbang Junior is required so you can understand the uh, state of charge of your battery and, and really monitor the incoming and outgoing uh, amps. Um, so what you're drawing versus uh, what you're putting back into it with solar panels or whatever your um, uh, renewable energy is. So in this case, I just did a, a dry fit uh, of the screws to make sure it uh, fit uh, correctly. You can put this in backwards. If you flip it around the other way, um, the amps will be negative, and that's something I found uh, when I went to install it. I actually had it uh, backwards. But here's a look at the device uh, kind of outside of uh, your setup. You do get some screws with it with a couple of standoffs. Uh, one thing to note that you can't actually screw this in uh, with the uh, Whizbang Junior on it because you, there's not enough room there to put it on. So you got to put the shunt on the wall or wherever you're wiring it in first, and then you screw the the Whizbang Junior onto it. I uh, didn't end up going with uh, the standoffs myself. Uh, part of the reason for the standoff was to create uh, add some extra monitors. So here's a look at inside the Airstream with the with the uh, Classic 150 there on the right, and I was just trying to determine what the best orientation of it was, um, and I think I'll put it in the vertical orientation. Um, and the purpose of this this is a this goes on the low side uh, of the battery circuit, so it goes on the negative side. So basically, you hook your your negative wire up to your battery, and then up to uh, one side of the shunt. And uh, the other side uh, goes from, again, uh, an another negative cable into your classic 150, into the negative side. And basically what you want is all amperage passing through there. So it senses when there's a, a draw on the battery, when the battery needs energy, that means you're drawing energy out of it. Uh, and then when you're putting it back in, it also senses that because it's um, uh, pushing uh, solar uh, you know, photovoltaic energy back into the system. So the next thing we need to do, once we got uh, the shunt and the Whizbang Junior hooked up together, and of course the, the main wires, uh, negative going to the battery into the Class 150, you need to plug it into the, the purple wire into Auxiliary 2. So you got to take off the cap of your Class 150, and I removed the, uh, the Ethernet cable just to make it a little easier to access. It's a, it's a really tiny uh, wire. Uh, this just provides, I think it's 5 volts uh, to the unit. And then the Whizbang Junior itself will five uh, or will will blink. I think once every five seconds. If you look at the manual, there's um, it will blink uh, in different fashions for different issues. If it, if it doesn't see uh, communication with the Classic 150, uh, it'll it'll blink in a certain fashion. If it's working correctly, it'll blink. I think every five seconds or whatever. So we go ahead um, and get this uh, all screwed in. Now uh, remember, I had this in upside down the first time, and I uh, learned quickly that that was wrong and it doesn't cause any harm it simply shows uh, the amperage uh, in uh, negative basically uh, so in the reversed uh, fashion so you just flip it around and then you're good in my experience once this was plugged in correctly it just automatically picked it up and started seeing it so you click the status button three times to get over to the whiz bank screen um, I just uh, went by it there, but um, from the main screen, you click uh, three times. On the main screen, it will flash on and off with the state of charge as well. So here's the initial setup. You'll note that the state of charge is less than 100%, even though I was in float. So that takes a day or two to reset. So once uh, there's an option in the config, basically, to set it to reset on uh, when it flips to uh, float the first time. And of course, I was in float when I installed this, so the state of charge, uh, you know, uh, select shows something different, basically inaccurate information, uh, and uh, and so mine shows remaining 56 amp hours, um, but uh, my battery is actually a 90 amp hour. Um, in the next screen, which I, I should be showing in a second here, there's some uh, configuration options where you can set uh, your amp hours. Uh, of the battery, here's the capacity, so I set it my 90 amp hour, and you can also set the efficiency. So uh, sealed lead acid is a bit more efficient than a flooded lead acid, and you can you can define that there if it's over or under reading uh, or rating or you know presenting the state of charge for you, to you. You can kind of tweak it uh, there as well. So um, some nice features in the configuration, and uh, so let's uh, get on to the experience with this and what it looks like in the local status panel. So I'm cutting into the uh, the editing of this video. I'm putting this video together about uh, the Whizbang, 
And one thing I'm waiting for that I haven't had a chance to finalize yet before I can uh, really complete this video uh, is to understand and uh, wait for my amp hours come up to 90. You can see here in the local status application, Midnight Solar Status Panel, um, that my amp hours remaining is 66. I should have 90 or somewhere near there. And it says the uh, state uh, of charge is 73%. It's never been 100%. Uh, percent. And I don't know how to reset it. There is an option in the config to reset uh, once um, it gets, once it hits float again, um, then it resets to 100% um, state of charge, um, and the the amp amp hours um, all reset, I believe. Um, but the initial setup doesn't do that. So for whatever reason, it started at uh, net amp hours being you know minus 60 or something. I'm not sure where that comes from, and I don't know a way to uh, reset that. So my state of charge has never been 100%, even though it was 100%. When I installed this, uh, it was in float. And actually, you can see up in the uh, the right hand of the uh, the iMovie or the video, it says float. So it was always in float when I was installing this. So I'm kind of just waiting until um, I pull in enough amp hours, only pulling in 2.9 right now as I make this uh, clip here. I'm waiting until uh, I can pull in enough amp hours to get this down to zero. And then... Um, the net amp hour should be uh, be positive at that point, and then also it should flip over to float, and my state of charge um, should uh, then be 100%, or uh, I should see a more accurate description of you know how how much percentage I should have, and it really should only float between 80 and 100, because um, I really don't use it much at sitting in the camper doing nothing. So, um, quick little uh, clip uh, about the state of charge, and then I'll uh, return. In a second, in the YouTube, uh, by YouTube magic, um, with uh, the conclusion of this video. All right, Yahoo, this uh, has finally updated. Um, I was just checking back out later. It has now uh, collected enough solar to go to float mode. And on the flip over to float, then reset the, the amp hours there, as you can see. Uh, net amp hour is zero, so I expect that to be f uh, positive going forward assuming I don't use a whole bunch of energy out of my battery. And uh, then really my amp hour should pretty much stay the same, maybe drop into 85 amp hours or something, or 80 amp hours. And you notice that my state of charge is also 100%. So that seemed to work very well. You can see the charge status is float. So this is the trigger point. And that's a configuration item um, to set it back uh, to, uh, or to zero out um, the amp hours uh, when you got back to float. Um, so that I could calculate correctly. So I am at my 90 amp hour. So this should be interesting. So I'm going to watch this over in the next um, over in the next night or so, and just see how this reacts, how it, uh, what it looks like in the morning after um, all night, uh, basically running the Wi-Fi bridge that I used to connect to it. Um, that will take a couple amp hours out of it, and we'll see where what the state of charge is looking like at that point. And uh, I should very quickly gain state of charge 100% every single day um, if it's able to recoup. Um, all the uh, energy used. So, so far it's looking good and uh, fairly straightforward. So I'll get back to you uh, when I have an update. So this is a morning update of the whiz bang. Uh, if you look in the state of charge, we're at 95%. That's because uh, in the last clip we were at 100%. That was the that was yesterday. And so overnight it's been draining because of the, the Wi-Fi repeater that I have uh, attached to it so that I can actually uh, uh, view this panel remotely. Um, now, you, the, the key thing with the whiz-bang, of course, is you see this uh, system. Uh, so it's uh, bringing in a negative 0.3 amps. That means we're using more uh, power than the solar panels up, are currently putting in. Now it's early morning here, 8 o'clock. The sun is uh, not over, so it's bringing in uh, a few uh, volts, uh, but no significant energy. It's bringing about, about 1 watt, as you can see uh, in, in, the, in the watt meter there. <clears throat> So not very much, and the net amp hour is zero. So I expect that to uh, actually uh, increase today, as the net amp hour uh, should be greater than uh, the power used should be, uh, or power coming in should be greater than the power used. So that's interesting. 86 amp hours remaining. So that means overnight I use about four amp hours. Um, yeah, four amp hours from my 90 amp hour and about 5% of my battery. So that's kind of interesting to see. But again, um, you know, the, the more amperage you pull out uh, per hour, uh, the faster the battery discharges. So if you discharge it very, very slowly, you actually get more amp hours than if you discharge it uh, quickly. You don't get your full 90 amp hours necessarily. So a slow drain 
I think the whiz bang um, takes about, well, uh, I guess according to that, it takes about um, uh, 0.5 uh, uh, amp hours uh, out. So 0.5 amps per hour, effectively. So throughout the night, uh, that's what it be, would be taking. Um, apart from uh, the extra energy that the solar uh, panels have put in this morning while the sun is up. <clears throat> Remember, it's uh, it takes more than, uh, you know, it's, it's drawing more than uh, 0.3 amps. So the solar panels are putting in a little bit of energy, i.e. The, the one watt. Well, now it just bumped up to two watts. So anyways, yeah, it's, so it's bringing in about 0.2 amps. You can see on the, on the side there, um, 0.1, 0.2. So a quick update, um, that's the state of charge. And that's really the whole point of the whiz bang to give you this ability to see how much energy do I have left in amp hours and in a state of charge. So the remaining percentage of battery, remember this is an estimate, it's not exact, but it gives you a good indication. So if you only want to run your batteries down to say 70%, this may give you an excellent ballpark figure as to, are you getting close to that? If you're a full-time RVer or something, then this is the kind of thing you really, really need to know uh, because you don't want to uh, wreck your batteries. Now, if you have lithium ion, well, then you can drain them near zero and, you know, it doesn't cause too much trouble. But certainly uh, uh, sealed lead acid, uh, flooded lead acid, uh, etc. Um, you want you don't want to bring those uh, really but below 70 or 80, ideally, um, because the more you do, it just uh, really shortens the life of the battery. So a uh, quick little update on that. Um, and uh, we'll see uh, in, maybe in the next clip, I'll, I'll finish off the video. Um, and give you my overall thoughts and opinions uh, about this. Alright, this is the wrap up to the Whizbang Junior video. I want to say thanks to Midnight Solar for sending me out the Whizbang Junior and the shunt that goes along with it, the 500 amp shunt, um, just so I could have a look at it and uh, put this together with the Classic 150 and uh, see how it does. Um, and it works very well. So there it is. It is all done up just as we, we did at the beginning of the video. Uh, I haven't changed anything. It's working perfectly. The one thing that I was waiting for was to see if this battery would come up to state of charge 100% and indeed it is. So uh, it's bringing in about 23 watts right now. The battery is basically charged up so that's why it's in float and every time it goes to float it resets. So let's go over. Oops, I went too far. One, two, three. There it is. Um, so, what you can see here, uh, this is the whiz bang stats here. You can see that we're plus 1.5 amps. That means we're bringing 1.5 over top of what we're using. Um, so, uh, we've got full 90 amp hour charge. Our battery uh, is about 20 degrees Celsius. It's a cool day today, but it's nice and shiny, sunny. State of charge is 100%. So, we're golden. So, if I were to load this up, then we would. Uh, see some negative numbers. So let me turn on a few things and we'll see if we can load this up and get this to show uh, negative amps because that's really the key. You want to understand are you drawing amps or are you putting, are you putting more amps into the battery than you're drawing, etc. Now we are drawing some power for this uh, particular Wi-Fi repeater. This is how I remotely um, connect to it and that's, uh, that's how I connect to it to see the, the numbers when uh, you see that uh, local status panel application. That's all over Wi-Fi. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll plug something in and we'll see um, the, uh, the amperage change. All right, so I've got uh, some lights on, I've got the radio on, and uh, we're still pulling in more amperage, and that's because uh, the solar panels aren't maxed out. I'm, I don't have a heavy enough load on it that the solar panels can't um, pull in enough power for so we're not even getting into negative amps, um, but but again, that's when you realize you see the state of charge is 100%. Even with the lights and the radio going, that's when you recognize that you know whether you have enough solar panels on your on your setup or not. Um, and it also relates to your battery capacity. If you're running a bunch of stuff and your battery capacity uh, isn't uh, very great then you're going to be uh, quickly running down your state of charge and your, your solar panels will then have to be large enough uh, to, to keep them powered up. Now I don't need to run a lot on my current system. I don't have huge heavy load, but during the day I'll have a cooler on it which draws about 4 amps steadily. 
Uh, but that, uh, because it draws 4 amps steadily, 90 amp hours is not enough to sustain um, that, that cooler uh, overnight. So that's where you need a more storage capacity versus more wattage. The other thing is when it's gray and cloudy out, 200 watts of solar, which is on, which is what it's on <clears throat> up on the roof right now, that's not enough uh, to power 4 amps per hour for a cooler just because of the lack of sunlight. So you got to consider that as well. So really the sizing, I mean, sizing is a whole other video, and a lot of people do sizing uh, of solar systems a lot better than I do, but sizing is a big thing. How much power do you need to store for your overnight usage of that power? How much energy can you bring in during the day when the sun is up? Will that replenish the battery storage that you have? So 90 amp hours isn't a lot, so 200 watt panels should restore it pretty quick if you drain it. Um, but if you have you know, uh, 200, 300 amp hours of uh, storage, um, you may need a proportionally larger um, solar array to refill it each day and to have it come up to 100% state of charge every day. So just some things to, to think about there. So, yeah, again, another, another uh, fun and interesting and successful uh, install of the Whizbang Junior Unit going into my Classic 150 by Midnight Solar and uh, again they did uh, provide it to me um, to look at so it uh, works really well, really well and uh, thanks to Midnight Solar for that so yeah we'll see you guys in the next video